a 10 mile zone. You did real well. Oh, I'm very big with juveniles. Some day I want to pop one of his kids right in the ear. Yeah, yeah, sure you are. Well, at least my kids don't talk to me that way. You're a pretty stern father, huh? As a matter of fact, my kids don't talk to me at all. They're always busy doing their homework. Got to make an appointment with them and give them their allowance. Yeah. <laughs> Some gal found a receipt for a new dress in her husband's pocket. <laughs> well, it started deep on Park Avenue. I just quit. Well, as soon as you shut up, the guy reminded her tomorrow's her birthday. Is this a switch? Let's take a cab. Can you make it out? Yeah, yeah. It's all downhill all the way. <laughs> What have we here? There's a gold lighter, a silver cigarette case, a press comb with diamond chips, a jeweled compact. Her make, she chose three prior arrests on the three aliases. Shoplifting, theft from an employer, and bad checks. Two one-year jokes. I think we can find a place for you, Miss Turner. Well, make it a quiet one where I can pray for a paper shortage. Those lousy make sheets. You hurt his ankle. If you hurt your ankle, why are you taking your pulse? Because I like to take my pulse. You ever see a person take his pulse before? Not unless he's sick. Well, I'm not sick. I just wanted to take my pulse. All I have to do is get a written order from the commissioner to take my pulse. Okay, okay. You just asked me if I had ever heard of a person taking his pulse, and I said... I heard you. Now, can we let the whole matter drop? Consider it dropped. He said it's quite mine. Was that address again? Thanks. Burglary, Class House Grocery Store, 421 Davis Street. You talking about the mess, but you ain't by the beat, bro.
mama is Italian. She'll give you Italian coffee. Even if you don't like it, she'll give you Italian coffee. Mama, these gentlemen are detectives. This is Mr. Meyer, Mr. Carella, uh, my wife, Maria. Carella? Si. È italiana lei? Si. Sono figlio di italiano. Oh, that's funny. I've been married to her for 20 years and never learned to speak one word of Italian. <laughs> oh, I have some wonderful cheese I would like you to taste. Uh, Mr. Casa, did you just tell us what happened right from the beginning, sir? Yes. Here, try this. No, no, thank you. Huh? Well, I couldn't sleep. I was in the kitchen. Eating again? Sauerkraut and bread first, and then he wonders why he can't sleep. Two doors between me and the store. Both of them closed. First, I heard a thump. Then, some footsteps. So he goes in the store. He's as brave as a lion. He wants to get shot. Maria, please. <laughs> She's right, Mr. Kassab. He should have called us. Let us do the investigating. So how do I call? The phone is in the store. So I go into the store, but they heard me coming, both of them, and they ran. But you said you got to look at them. Uh, only from the back. Uh, they were wearing, you know, those leather jackets, like uh, like all the boys in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Are they big or small? Oh, one was big, the other medium. You knew about the bell. You found the customers of yours. Uh, there are lots of boys in the neighborhood. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. All of them come into the store. Don't you feel good? Huh? Oh, I feel fine. It's just, uh, it's hot in here. You're getting a cold, maybe, or a flu. Where do you feel bad? I'm just warm, that's all. Some coffee will help. Good, strong Italian coffee. Oh, okay. Please, please don't bother. You see, I told you. Some espresso? No, thanks. Uh, uh, about the loss, uh, have you had time to find out what was taken? Yeah. From the register, four dollars. Some cigarettes, a bottle of wine. But the rest, they missed. I had two hundred and forty dollars in cash hidden in a coffee can underneath the counter. That's an awful lot of money to keep in a coffee can, Mr. Garza. I keep telling him, go to the bank. But Nathan, he doesn't like banks. You're a lot safer than coffee cans, Mr. Garza. A lot safer. When you go home, take some aspirin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Any satisfied, Detective Meyer? Yeah, well, thanks for the try, anyway. It was a lab. We got plenty of prints at the market, none of them usable. Mm. The type of blood? Yeah, type O. We photographed the tool marks, too. Now, if we can only find the tools to match them. Yeah, good luck. Meyer. You have a medical degree. Huh? Will you stop taking your pulse and go see a doctor and find out what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong. It's, it's just a habit, like some people scratch their nose. Yeah, yeah, sure, it's a habit. It's a brand new habit. It just started tonight. Well, habit's got to start sometime. Steve, let's let it drop. Is there anything in the ammo file? Yeah, sure. Fred Laclede used the flypaper a bit. Fred's been dead for five years. You know, if these kids get away with this cossack job, next time they'll pull a bigger job. Yeah, I'll off burglary, and then one of them will take a job in a garage long enough to find out how to use a blowtorch. Then it'll be a box man. Yeah, it should be nice if we could bust him now, so there's a lot of headaches. You've been off duty for 20 minutes, why don't you go home? You know, I like that kind of thinking. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, just remember, you're supposed to be off, too. <laughs> be through in a minute.
was one of my good days. I didn't bump into any furniture. <laughs> I was going to do that. I didn't mind. What are you waiting for? Your tie, gun, handcuffs. Oh. I've got a small steak. I can make a salad. Not tonight. A bowl of soup? Let's skip it, huh? I'm not hungry. You have a bad day? A bad day, a long day. I'm tired. How about some more milk? No, thanks. Maya, what's wrong? Nothing wrong. No troubles, no worries. I'm a happy man. Are you? I haven't seen you smiling lately. Something's bothering you, and you tell me it's not your job. I don't think it's me. What is it, Maya? Nothing. It's uh, something I ate a little indigestion. I'm heartburn. That's today. But you haven't been sleeping well for a week. Will you do something for me, please? Will you go in for checkup? That's what you want? When? As soon as I have a day clear, I'll call. Make an appointment. Tomorrow. You don't go to work until four. It's too late to call now. I called. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. They're expecting you. <laughs> Just a minute. Good morning, Meyer. Oh, hello, Doc. How's the detective business? Well, we got plenty of customers. Oh, you look healthy enough. I feel fine. It's just that Sarah worries. You know how wives are. Oh, indeed I do. Most of us are lucky they do worry. I told her not to make such a fuss. It's just indigestion. Yeah. Now, uh, would you take your shirt off and sit down at the end of the table, please? Say 99. 99. Once again. 99. And again. 99. Once more. 99. All right, now I want you to say one, two, three. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three. And again. One, two, three. Now take a deep breath. Is that all right? Mm. You ever have dizzy spells? Well, I get a little short of breath now and then. Let me see. Quiet now. You ever have headaches, nausea? I'm very tired. I get a little headache now and then. Every once in a while, my heart skips a beat. Uh-huh. I see. You ever have the feeling in a blackout? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then you do have dizzy spells. I guess you'd call it that. Oh, don't get dressed yet. 
I want to get an electrocardiogram, some x-rays. And it is serious. Take it easy. I just want to make further tests. That's what the machines are for. Now, these will bring your blood pressure down. And you take them as directed, particularly at moments of stress. Give it to me straight, Doc. There's nothing to give you until I complete the tests. Nurse Crowley will take you to the EKG room. doing here? The doctor told me I could keep the company till the nurse comes. What did he really say? He said you were nervous. What nervous? It's a routine examination. But that's what he told me. Look, there's really no reason for you to hang around here. I have nothing else to do. Nothing else to do? You always tell me you're so busy around the house. Who's going to be home when the kids come back from school? At 11 in the morning. <laughs> Bring all of your clothes, please. please. Just relax, please. We're almost through now. Does the gadget ever make a mistake? Not to my knowledge. Quiet, please. Breathe normally. Nurse Crowley? Oh, yes, doctor. Of course. Didn't hurt one little bit, did it? All right. You can get dressed now. Miss Squiggles, hard to read? Not for a trained person. Can you give me a preview, kind of a sneak preview? I'm sorry, I cannot discuss the tape. It wouldn't be professional. Not even one little word, like uh, good or bad? I'm sorry, no. Well, when will the doctor get it? Can you tell me that? I don't know. He's been called to the hospital for emergency surgery. Excuse me. What do you mean the doctor has to come back to the office all day? What kind of a routine is that? I know about the emergency operation. That was this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all about the hospital rounds and the house calls. All right, all right, all right. I get the picture. No, no, don't try to contact him. It's not urgent. Eighty-seven squad, Detective Meyer. What? Yeah, right away. Kassoff's grocery store. Another burglary. This time the old man was shot. put up a fight. They shot him four times. The ambulance boys don't think he'll make it. How about Mrs. Carstow? Well, he threw one shot at her and missed. Did she see the whole thing? Part of it. At first she said she knew one of the hold-up men. And then she changed her mind. And now she won't say anything. Well, we'll have to take care of that. I just thought at the very beginning. Well, 
The store closes at 9 o'clock. They entered just as Nathan was locking up. Both armed and both wearing rubber masks. They were after the money they missed last night. Coffee can. How do you know about that? Mr. Kazar. He told the whole block about it. The one thing he forgot to say was that he opened the bank account this morning. So? So they cleaned out the register and pistol whipped the old man. Till he told where to find the can. Nothing in it. So then they went to work on him again. Mrs. Kozlov heard the noise and came running. She got here just as the old man took the mask off of one of them. Then she did see the face. Well, she said she did. Said she knew one. But then when I asked his name, she wouldn't give. Well, we'll have to try. We'll need a lab cover. On the way. Mrs. Kozlov? You remember me? Detective Meyer, 87th Precinct. Who did it, Mrs. Casa? You saw his face. You told the patrolman you knew who it was. Well, who is he? No, it... I couldn't see. It happened too fast. Well, you're afraid they're going to come back if you talk to us, isn't that it? Please, I didn't see his face. It happened too quick. And we want them, Mrs. Kasov. If you can't let them do this, it's somebody else. We didn't catch them last night. That's because we didn't know who they were last night. You name the one you saw, Mrs. Kossoff. We'll catch them both. It's a promise. All right. You saw what they were wearing. What clothes did they have on? Just clothes. How tall were they? How old were they? Please, I don't know. You don't have to be afraid, Mrs. Kasaf. We'll protect you. Talk. All it makes is more trouble. About the coffee can and the money, that's what you mean, isn't it? Look, why don't you just forget about that? The only thing that matters now is to catch them before they shoot somebody else. Please, I didn't see anybody. The hospital call. The old man didn't make it. Do you wait? Thanks. Kasov, don't you want us to catch the man who killed your husband? What did you say? The man who murdered your husband. Don't you want us to catch him? My Nathan? He's dead. A morto. He died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. The man who murdered him, do you want him to go free, Mrs. Kasov? No. Does he live in this neighborhood? Two blocks away. Thank you, Mrs. Kosa.
down, Brodak? What do you want? The police. Detective Perella, 87th Precinct. This is Detective Martin. Well, we got no reason for the police. Just a few questions, Mrs. Brodak. It's the police. They got questions. Yeah? About what? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Selling a complaint. Noisy TV. Sit down. Are you Danny Brodak? Yes, yeah, so what? Uh, get on your feet, Danny. Hey, what's going on here? You finished? Yeah, I'm finished. We'll ask the questions, Mr. Well, Brodak. now, what do you want Danny for? He ain't done nothing. He's been right here all night. Yeah, right here since dark. Now, let me tell you cops something. Danny's a minor, see? You want to do business with Danny? You do it with his father. That's me, his father. Oh, did he tell you to lie for him, Mr. Brodak? Did he tell you why? Did he tell you what he did? He didn't do nothing. You cops make a federal case out of everything. So a kid maybe steals a hubcap, knocks out a street light. So cares the kids. He didn't tell him, huh, Danny? Tell him what? Because he wants us to do it. Yeah. You guys seem to do anything you want to. Go ahead. What's there to tell? He didn't steal any hubcaps tonight, Mrs. Brodick. He robbed a grocery store about a block from here and shot Mr. Kassoff. You know? You're nuts. Oh, no, not Danny. Danny wouldn't do anything like that. Where'd he get a gun? Why's a kid like him gonna get a gun? They get him and they use him. Well, Danny wouldn't shoot anybody. He wouldn't be here if he weren't sure. Oh, you sure would. To look good, you cops gotta make a lot of arrests. Well, let me tell you something. You take that boy out of here and I'll sue you for false arrest. Well, I've been threatened with that 100 times, Mr. Brodak, and I haven't been sued yet. You're not helping yourself, Danny. Or your mother and your father. You want them to be charged as accessories, it'll be accessory to murder, Danny, because the old man died. You got it wrong. I know my kid. You got it wrong. We got a witness, Mr. Brodick. A witness who saw Danny shoot Mr. Kassoff. Oh, yeah? Well, let me ask you something. I mean, if I shot Mr. Kassoff, how come I didn't shoot the witness? Huh? You tried, Danny. And missed. Then you ran. You know, you're really a gasser. I mean, you got some guy that was ducking bullets and saw somebody for one second, and you're going to bring that in as a witness. I mean, you really think that that's going to stand up in court or what? They teach bad law on TV, Danny. It'll hold. Where's the gun? I don't know anything about any gun. Probably in his room. Oh, no, you don't. Let's see your warrant. I've got that much law out of watching television, mister. You don't come busting in here without no warrant. All right, all right, we'll get a warrant. Danny, let me see your hands. Nothing doing. What do you want to see his hands for? Because somebody scratched himself pulling a bell off in Kassoff's store and left bloodstains. Now, if Danny's hands aren't scratched, it might help prove he's innocent. Come on, Danny, let me see your hands. I was playing with a cat yesterday, and she scratched me up. Now you're trying to railroad a kid because the cat scratched him. Big deal. An old man was pistol whipped and killed for $23, Mr. Brodick. Danny didn't kill nobody. All right. It would make it a lot easier on everybody if you just didn't lie. But if you want to play rough, that's the way we'll do it. Yes, he is the one. Danny Brodek. He shot my leader. <laughs> Please let me go. Yes, yes, you go. Thank you very much. Take good care of her. Sure will. I want to talk to Danny. I want to talk to my son. What for? He ain't done nothing. He was here all I night. I want to talk to my son. Look, Ma, the old lady made a mistake. There's nothing to talk about. I want to talk to Danny. Alone in his bed. Danny! Danny! <laughs> Out of the street. Mm -hmm. 
Seven Squad, Detective Havlin. Uh, Meyer, did Juvenal have anything for us? Oh, yes. Let's see, they had Brodeck on a car clout last year in March. He was arrested with a Michael Pitts. One, two, three, one, six, three, five, three, nine. Anything else? Well, the patrolman on the beat had seen Brodeck with a Ralph Dale. Let's see, address... Four, three, one, dip more, second floor, rears. Got it. How are you feeling? Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> You've come to the wrong place. You have a son named Michael? That's right. I'd like to talk to him, Pete. Well, you'll have to catch a plane. He's in San Diego. San Diego? Yeah, he's taking his boot training there. He's in the Navy. Yeah. Hey, name, rank, serial number in the upper left-hand corner. He's been there four weeks, just beginning to like it. You can read the letter if you want. No, thanks. It won't be necessary. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Pitt. Hmm, no bother. Time was when I hated cops coming knocking on the door at night, but... That's no more. Yeah, Michael's gonna take that training when he leaves boot camp. He's got good stuff in him. He'll make it fine. I'm sure he will. Thanks, Mr. Pitt. All right. <laughs> See what I see, Steve? What? You know what all adds up? Hardware, glass cutters. This might be the place where they got the stuff for the first robbery. scared me. You got a phone call just before we knocked on the door. Who was it? A friend. I thought it was a friend. It was wrong number. Friend named Danny Brodick. What did he want? The old man you shot is dead. Now, what did he want? His wife identified Danny. She'll identify you, too. It wasn't me. I didn't shoot anybody. You were standing there with a gun in your fist. Danny did it. He's crazy. All he wants to do is shoot. That was Danny on the phone just now. What did he want? You gotta believe me. I didn't shoot anybody. What did Danny want? Money. Getaway money. Where? Dock Street. The Stinson Warehouse. The one they're tearing down. <laughs>
do. Just shut up. You do what I tell you to do. some help. We'll be around from here by the time it comes. Can you make it to the car? Oh, sure. You better go for help. All right, speak carefully. Officer needs assistance. We have armed a juvenile in warehouse corner of 12th and Dock Streets. Shoot. You better shoot, cop. That's the only way you're gonna take me. You're real tough, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know I am. And that's why you better use that gun. Come on, come on, you chicken, shoot! I don't need a gun to handle a greasy punk like you. Oh, that's brave, that's brave talk when you got a gun in your hand.
Santa Squad, Detective Meyer. Well, sure, I sound official. I'm on duty. Now, why should my wife want to bother me while I'm on duty? So I could give you the good news, darling. The doctor called about your electrocardiogram. I knew you'd be anxious to hear. Oh, that. He says there's nothing wrong with your heart at all. He's telling me. He says all you need is more sleep and regular meals. No more raiding the refrigerator at midnight. I told you there's nothing to worry about. Okay? See you later. Women, they're always worried. <laughs> 